Inshallah. What we have from our community online, alhamdulillah, super loyal and powerful community, the mashallah posting like everywhere. Take the posts, take the, the, the sobats, take the short videos that the production group is putting out, post everywhere. You go to the charity site, take one of the initiatives, take the link of that and post it all over social media. Just like you post the articles and the videos, you can post each of the different initiatives for water well, for the milad, for all of these and post all over social media to bring attention to those websites. Because when they come to the website they see how easy we made it and facilitate to make a well and to dedicate a name and to have a loved one have a well in their name. So alhamdulillah as much as we propagate and, and spread this as much as Allah blesses us and dresses us and the one whom propagated and somebody made a well they share in the deed and the action, they share in the reward and the benefit. Everyone wants a finder's fee in dunya, this is the greatest finder's fee. That if somebody makes a well from a link that you sent out, every time and every molecule of water that comes out of that and blesses people that's written upon your account that you propagated that and that person reacted to that reality, inshaAllah. Allah address everyone and bless everyone. We have infinite ways to, to multiply blessings in our life. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, please forgive my ignorance, just struggling to understand the link between the people of tafakkur and the people who ask for only Waj Allah. What's the difference? Maybe it's a person with uh, coming new to the language barrier because it's the same thing. Means the people of the, of the holy face, why? Because the teaching is that they don't ask for the earth, they're not asking for paradise, they're not asking for everything that's going to perish. If, if all your life is about uh, your paradise reality, a big home and paradise, judgment day all of that will collapse. Everything will collapse, all the angels will collapse, everything will be brought to death. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. except the holy face. So then awliya came and said, why am I seeking that which is perishing? The most perishable is the earth, so you don't want to do good deeds and say, okay all I want is this the material world. Then you say, okay I'll have some good in material world but I want some in heavens. But if you pray too much only for your paradise reality, home, I want a river, I want all these things of paradise. That's also perishing but not as fast. But that which will not perish is the holy face. And that through all holy books describes the holy face, seek the holy face. Because that's a pure sincere understanding. Whether I know it or not this was what my shaykh taught me, seek that which is not perishing. And as a result that became the people of accompanying those shaykhs that only wanted the Divinely Face. And that many different talks and those you have to follow along in the meditation and energy, right? So the shaykh takes his energy from the face, 
the Divine Face and Seven Openings dress the face of Prophet in the world of life, it's not physical. And the face of Sayyidina Muhammad two eyes, two, two ears, two eyes, nostril and the tongue. These are seven points that dress by Allah and become wajikil kareem. The generous face of Allah's beloved Sayyidina Muhammad that's the power source, right? The power can't be the throne, the power can't be the angels, you have to find where the power source is. Everything else is running off of that power. So why would you want something that will run out of power? So where's the source of all power is the Divinely face. So they seek the Divinely face. So the face of Prophet is then in their meditation and their tafakkur when they elevated themselves in meditation that they became nothing, nothing, nothing. These are then in the six powers of the heart. That for the heart to open these six powers have to begin to open within the servant. And one of the understandings is the ability to connect to the, the holy face. So they're from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum, the face of Allah unknown to creation reflects to Sayyidina Muhammad Well Atiya Rasul only reflects to Ulul Amri Minkum because this is the Amr and the power and the command. So then we have to in our life find these ulul amr. When we do and they teach us about this reality then we sit and connect with the ulul amr and ask that, please connect me to your reality. And as soon as they become nothing and nothing and they keep connecting with the shaykh then they say, oh I have a strong connection with the shaykh, I hear his teachings, I'm familiar with his voice. Now I begin to tell myself, I don't want to exist, why is it me and my shaykh, why isn't it just the shaykh? So then they begin to learn how to meditate that, I don't want to exist, I don't want just to be two, I want it to be one where it's just your reality and I'm nothing. It's just your reality and I'm nothing until they can annihilate themselves and begin to see the presence of the shaykh is dressing them so that all that exists is the presence of the shaykh. So that becomes the face of the ulul am. If they reach to that point and then through their testing and testing and testing then the holy face of Atiya Rasul will begin to dress them and draw them nearer into the Divinely Presence. So it is the source of power. But can you reach a power if you don't close your eyes to connect to it? Or you're hoping by chance you walk around the city and one day you'll stick your finger into the power plant and actually find where the energy came from by random. No. So it took a person who eagerly wanted to seek out, where's the power plant in this city? And through their GPS they start connecting, looking, driving, seeking until they found the power plant. As a result they understand now how to connect with the power plant. Nothing happens randomly by walking in a grocery store. So it should be obvious the people who meditate they levitate spiritually. They connect as a result of connecting, they understand who's their Lord, they understand who is what? Their authority, they stop smoking because that's an authority over you. They stop their drinking, they stop all of the different vices. And that's exactly what Prophet described. Video games, that's a horrific vice, horrific vice. It's like crack for kids, right? They can sit for hours, eight hours, nine hours, ten hours, conquering an imaginal land that didn't go anywhere and didn't pay anything. So that has its own vice that stops people from going out and walking and doing something, accomplishing something, investing in something, learning something. So all of those have to be through tafakkur and contemplation where the person wants to know themselves. Otherwise if you don't know yourself how, how are you going to know anything? 
And that's exactly those Wahhabis. They don't know themselves, they don't know anything about themselves but my goodness they talk directly about Allah And you are with yourself all day long, how you don't know yourself but you want to now talk about the creator of the entire created universes. That's why it's so ridiculous that how could you talk about Allah when you don't know even your name, yourself and your reality, what are your vices, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah From last week's talks, the six out of every seven being removed from the earth relates to the Ashab al Kahf? Uh, that's a good try to throw out there, but I don't know how that re- relates to the Ashab al Kahf. When you try to meditate, try to connect to the sh- and try to reach towards energies, don't try to fish for, for something that doesn't exist there. So we just try to connect with the shaykh, connect to the oceans and the oceans of reality and uh, alhamdulillah. Then if you're reading on something, the seven holy openings and the, the reality of the Divine the Face and who, who are then the reality of these Ashab al kaf why is there seven and one? So those types of things you contemplate and through your heart inshaAllah you, you write it down but keep meditating and connecting to the shaykh that, Ya, ya Rabbi that open for me, Ya Rabbi because that those whom are in authority over me, I don't need to know their names because I don't know their names. So when we use the word Rabbi. It's all encompassing because who am I, who's my Rabb? Whomever is on authority over me that grant me the understanding of these seven openings and grant me to reach towards these realities, grant me then to read from these knowledges and what are the, the names of Allah the attributes of Allah that dress these holy openings. You go to the website, Lataif al and the opening of the heart and Grand Shaykh's teachings on, on the on the lataif of the heart and the entering of the cave and the cave of uh, happiness, the cave in which Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq entered in Muharram because this is the, the journey. Surah Tawbah verse 40 is when Prophet went with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq from Mecca to Medina but they stopped at Qar, Qar Thawr, the cave of Thawr which they say is the equivalent of Orion's belt. I think Thawr was the name for Orion in the constellations. But the secret of entering into caves means that in that cave of reality Prophet wanted to establish a physical What's the word we used when these dimensions in the sci-fi movies open, what is that? A portal, wanted to open an understanding of a Divinely portal. That before we enter into the city of light that we're going to establish this portal. And then what transpired in the portal means they entered into a cave and it became veiled. Because as people were running and seeking to attack Prophet and them all shortened, they couldn't see it. They came to the cave, they couldn't see anything except the spider web and two eggs and a dove sitting. And that we've given talks before of that reality. So it means that was a portal that was opened by Prophet that there is a dimension between the world of form and Medina to Munawwara and the city of light. You have to enter into the portal that takes you from the world of form into the world of light. And these are the shaykhs of Barzakh and the great, one of the great realities of this Barzakh knowledge is Sayyidina Abbas Qadr interdimensional shaykhs, right? 
that they say they serve the same role. They take the inhabitants of Mecca because the first layer of Mecca was 13 years of fighting, right? 13 years you're struggling so it means takes the people of struggle. Who, who's coming on this path to struggle? So they're emailing, oh I'm doing nothing happening, okay welcome to you Prophet struggled for us 13 years and this is Muhammadun Rasulullah we have to struggle 13,000 years it's not even equivalent. So it means there is a state of struggling, interdimensional shaykh has to then take people from Mecca into Medina to Munawwara as a tour guide, right? So he gathers people in Mecca, he brings his caravan and camels to Mecca and in everybody's busy state of Mecca struggling, struggling with their desires. Now look at Mecca, it's all shops. Everybody has a shop in Mecca but you're not allowed to do the dhikrullah because the state of the believer is very busy, very dunya oriented. Look they want to spend 400 billion dollars on soccer matches. So the shaykh come with their caravan to take the people from Mecca to Medina. But you can't go direct because the Sunnah of Prophet is to stop at the cave. So we're following the Sunnah. We come with our caravans into Mecca and take the people who want to enter into Islam and want to begin their struggle and say, come with us now, we're going to take you to the presence of Prophet he is the city of lights but we have to stop at a cave and everything has to transpire within that cave and that becomes then why we keep talking about caves. So Allah Prophet gave for us these holy surahs that for your people on your caravan take them to Surah Tawbah. And as the Surah Tawbah dress them, this is the way of Shamsul Arafeen. So this is a caravan of how to take people on Shamsul Arafeen. And so they asked Surah Tawbah, dress our people that they come in to sacrifice, no Bismillah Allahu Akbar because you didn't get the keys to the city, the keys of the city is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Surah Tawbah has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem means come now make tawbah and in Medina there's Baba Tawbah. So they come in Baba Tawbah, verse 40 Allah shoots them now into Surat Al-Kahf and they entered the cave. Now what transpires within the cave to understand that this cave is not like any cave, this is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and if you really want to enter the city of lights well then you have to know who owns this cave, inshaAllah. Lot of information if people are not writing, might become like Chinese food. If you don't write it become like, I don't know what he just talked about it but then they're gonna misquote it by tomorrow <laughs> yeah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. When you recognize the bad lords that govern you, what should you do? Does hatred, jealousy and anger have different remedies for each of them? Yes. Yes, you meditate and, and ask for the salawats, ask for the energy that's in the, the book of energy. That how to bring angelic energy so that to fight these desires that I have to have my madad because it's not a fight I can win by myself otherwise I would have won it long ago. It's myself that causing the problem. So people are like want to move away, they want to go here, they want to go there but you still pack yourself in the suitcase. So it was me that was the problem. So it's not a place for me to go and it's not something I can resolve. That's why then the teaching start making your meditation. Make the connection, ask for the support and that you need the shaykh right there to be vigilant over you and begin to help you to fight your demons. You're not going to fight them for you because then what, what would that be? 
But the madad will teach you how to fight your demons. When it become too much they can intervene but they want the student to understand how to fight, how to make your salawats, how to build your energy, how to push back on these shaitanic desires, how to eat correctly, drink correctly, wash correctly, how to have good manners, keep your mouth quiet, don't open your mouth, don't let the fire of shaitan to enter. All of these is a divine battle regiment. So you see in the movies they come into the kingdom and then they're given to the knights and taught how to fight. This is how Allah wants the servant to fight. So the shaykhs are knighted and they're teaching people how to fight. Don't fight with your mouth and be vulgar because that's the satanic system that's outside barnyard. Allah's system is don't say anything, don't talk, do your meditation, keep your wudu, keep your practices because this fight is only Divine power. No satanic power in this, as soon as they use bad character shaitan has now come and the two they, they won't match, the two they don't deal together. So then this knighted reality of how to battle against shaitan is the regiment and discipline that Allah is giving to the servant. Wash, wudu, make your practices, do your salawat strong on your madad, strong on your good character. And as a result they have a chivalrous character, futuwa from Imam Ali Salaam. Right, so when somebody spat upon Imam Ali Salaam he put his sword down, said, I was going to kill you for the sake of Allah in a battle but now that you have done this to me I'm afraid that if I hit you again it would be from my own desire and he sheathed his sword out of fear that if something was to happen Allah would say that at that moment that was from your anger, not for my vengeance, not to, to work on Allah's behalf. So this was immense, immense chivalry. So this is what people are not used to, they think they can just do whatever they want, say whatever they want and they'll accomplish Allah's satisfaction and it doesn't work that way. It requires an immense amount of discipline and good character. And if they do then alhamdulillah the reward is infinite. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi I have a question regarding the blue moon the last two nights. Any significance of this blue moon? Yeah there's always significance but more interesting there was two full moons on this month. So alhamdulillah that lots of lights, lots of energy, lots of blessings. You know that if uh, in the final phases of dunya, if the dunya is perishing we said that Allah then going to increase the amount of energy upon His servants whom believe. So this if this is the phase of, of a passing and the phase of something ending then glad tidings for those whom believe and they work righteousness and good deeds. Allah then gives the guarantee from tonight that whatever they do of goodness Allah's sending the reward and if nobody's doing goodness they even get more reward because the few represent many, that the few whom sit for the face of Allah and make their salawat, try to fight against their bad character then they receive a immense reward from Allah especially to compensate for the last days in which a few will represent many. And, and the many will be relying upon only a few souls that have light and guidance, they just don't know it yet. That, that tawis they, they, they made fun of, they'll be begging for one, they won't find one into something biting at their feet. <laughs> now tell me what you're gonna do <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Shaykh, I am new to this way of tariqah 
I found your channel only a few months ago, so can you please guide me that how and from where shall I start my training? And can I train without ever meeting the shaykh physically? Yeah, you, st you start from the, the beginning, you email help me at nurmuhammad.com, we sent you our introductory letters. And remember it's not somebody who's done this for the first time, this is 35 years of doing this. So you take the first letter, follow the links, get the next letter for meditation, get the next letter for taweez and energy. The, the books are on Amazon or on our website, you, you order the book on meditation and order the book on energy and, and start to build yourself, it's all a curriculum. You have to know how to meditate, how to understand the, the energy and the qudra. And then the YouTube channel you watch the videos uh, at whatever category your heart is, is bringing you in. Some people come in by tech, they love the technology talks, they start going through this. Some want the Arabic letters and numbers, they go towards that direction. Some most want the meditation and energy teachings. So depending upon what the heart is vibrating then you watch those videos and sort of binge watch every day, every day so that you feel the connection, you feel the familiarity with the shaykh, you're more eager to connect. Now let me ask you, you haven't been to Medina or Mecca either, does that mean that you, you don't pray? No, because you have more of a yearning when you haven't been there because that's the reality of love. That when, when you have this love for Allah everyone is praying and they haven't been there. Everyone yearning to go to Medina and they haven't been there. At some point they'll be ready to go. I wouldn't recommend that the first thing you do is go because you could actually become greatly discouraged. You may have a very bad experience, you may have a very difficult experience. So it's more important to put your heart and your mind in a state in which this love builds, the love for Allah builds, the yearning to, to pray in the presence of Kaaba and visualizing the Kaaba, the yearning to have this love, I want to build this love for Prophet So when I enter Medina it's like I'm running to the maqam, not questioning, oh why, why should I do this, who's that? And then you feel regretful years later in your life, oh my God how I entered Medina like that? You know I'm sim I would imagine there must be hundreds of millions of people with this immense regret because they, they plan their hajjas and umrahs where they spend all their time in Mecca and they barely spend a day in Medina and later to find out that the, what the reality of Medina to Munawwara was and how they rushed in and out and left. So yes, we don't have to rush to things, we have to build the love and the understanding and uh, if it's time to, to, to go there then Allah will open that time inshaAllah in the appropriate manner. But it's always best to go when we're fully educated from the level of the heart of its reality. We understand the presence of Mecca and what it represents for a heart and what the holy presence of Medina to Munawwara and Sayyidina Muhammad And that at that state we yearn that make me to be a guest for your arrival that I'm coming as your guest, as somebody who has immense love for you, accept me as your guest and that's what's important inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi, I'm not a Muslim or a Sufi but I listen to the teachings here and work on my character and manners. Is it okay for me to listen to the daily awrad? If I figure out pronunciation will that be okay? Sure, alhamdulillah this is uh, permitted to listen to everything, to follow everything and you are, you are more than what you give yourself credit. So that's, that's something we have to always understand. Right? We don't know ourselves when we say that I am this or I am that. Uh, being a Muslim in, in, in an Arabic sense maybe no, you don't understand what that is. But being one whom is trying to submit my will to the will of God because that same phrase in English that's all it means is a servant of the Lord whom wishes to submit His will 
to the will of the Creator and what we call that? Thy kingdom come and thy will be done, God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I want the kingdom of God to come into my heart and I want my heart to be His holy kingdom. And I want to submit my will to His desires, what is it that He wants for me? And I want to pray with putting my head to the ground and meditating with my head to the ground. Why? Because my head is causing all these problems. So I want to humble my head and put my head to the ground and say that my head it has to be down and my heart has to be up. So when I put my head and face to the ground my heart is at its highest point. And God is with the heart and not the head. So means all of these have an immense, immense reality that we are the people whom put our face to the ground. But because the ego and the bad desires reside within the head, so when we continuously put our head to the ground we're showing our head that you belong here, nowhere else. Means that submit to your Lord and your Lord's will, God's will is in the heart not in the head of people. So then the will of God has to be at the highest point. That's why when these people stand up and pray standing up, what are they showing? They're showing their will is below their head and the will of God is below their head and that their ego is supreme because God doesn't reside within the head of men but He resides within the heart of men. And the head of men contains the ego and bad desires. So means which would be an upright position to pray? If you pray standing well then your ego is on top of the will of God. So that can't be correct. So then the correct way to pray to Allah and to beg for forgiveness and communicate with the Divine is to put my ego to the ground and keep my heart at its highest point in which the will of God is higher than my ego. And that becomes supreme because then God's kingdom like it is in heaven supreme on this earth God's kingdom can only be in sujood because the head goes to the ground which is the ego and the heart resides on top and that becomes this, the emulations of the heavens because in the heavens everything submits to the will of God only on the earth is the satanic realm in which everybody is doing their own thing. So alhamdulillah that Allah inspire people, good people to come to the ways of reality, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.